Welcome back friends. Uh, in this particular video, we'll be talking about uh, the other pathway, which is the MBL pathway of uh, complement activation. Okay. Now, uh, this MBL pathway is resembling most of the part is a classical pathway. In the classical pathway, we have discussed that uh, we have discussed the three barriers, remember? So, C3 converters, then C5 converters, then finally the lytic pathway. Now, the lytic pathway we have talked about uh, for the classical approach, and that lytic pathway is common to all of these above three type of complements that we are going to study. Now, uh, in this particular MBL pathway, the full form of this MBL pathway is mannose binding lectin pathway or mannan binding lectin pathway. Now, several things come into account when we are talking about this MBL or mannan binding lectin or mannose binding le lectin. So, this is not green. Sorry. I don't think green is much more visible in the camera. So, I must write it with other color. Uh, Manos, I think double N or single N, binding lectin pathway. So this is Manos binding, M A N O S E, I guess. So it's a Manos binding lectin pathway or Manan binding lectin. Now here are several things. One is uh, Manos, this is a sugar, remember? Manos is a sugar. Binding lectin. Lectin is a sugar binding molecule. Now you can remember the lectin is a sugar binding molecule. So we have two different things, mannose and then lectin. Now lectin is going to attach with mannose as from the name. Now mannose is present in bacterial cell. It's a bacterial cell surface molecule. It's a bacterial cell surface pro, uh, glycogen. Now uh, not glycogen actually, it's a uh, actually polysaccharide. And in the bacterial cell, this mannose are present. It is acting like a signal, molecular signal that can tell us, that can tell complement system that this is a bacteria that enters into our body. Remember? Okay. And lectin is something. Uh, it's part of the complement system. Now, for each of this complement, like classical, alternative, and as well as MBL, we can rely on several key players of complement. It is one pathogen which is required. This bacteria for in this case, which is having mannose onto its surface. Second thing is the killer cells that will be different and the complement protein. So this is not necessary killer cell. We can have killer cell or not. Now we must have complement proteins. Now for mannose binding lectin, there are uh, some variations among these complement proteins. Now in this case, in there is uh, complement proteins uh, C2, complement protein C3, but instead here C5 is also there. But here in this case, uh, several different proteins are also acting. Now, the proteins in this case acting are called MASP1 and MASP2. So, let me write it here. So, the extra proteins that we are getting here are MASP, MASP1, MASP, MASP2. MASP, the full form of MASP is mannose binding lectin associated serum proteases. Mannose binding lectin or MBL associated serum proteases. So MBL acting serum protease 1 and MBL acting serum protease 2. Now these mannose binding lectin proteins are acting like the first cleavage proteins which can help to cleave C2 and C3 in this case. Okay, so this is really important. Now in previous case, in case of classical pathway of all complement activation, we are having a bacterial cell where the initiation of the recognition uh, of this bacterial pathogen is done by C1. Remember C1 QRS. Now in that case, A start to chew out the simple portion of C4, then C4B will again uh, help to chew out the C2 into C2B and so on. Now here, in this particular case, for the breaking down events, we can rely on the serum proteases. Now remember the term proteases. Proteases means we need to back. So, so some enzymes which can cleave proteins, which can cleave polypeptide linkages. They are called proteases. Now here serum proteases means proteases that are found in our blood serum. Now here the basic thing is going on in such a way. So let us draw a bacterial cell surface first. So let us draw this. So like uh, again here say this is a our bacterial cell this is a bacterial cell, this is a bacterial cell surface. Now again, onto this bacterial cell, 
we do, again in this case remember we don't need the presence of antibody for the functioning so it can function without antibody so here it is a cell and we are having antigens now what we can do is that uh, we must have access to MASP1 and MASP2 because this MASP protein will act like serum proteases okay now here in the bacterial cell we are having antigens so let us draw antigens so this is this green color thing are antigens remember we have draw, we also draw it drew it for our classical pathway approach now here this is the antigen uh, so antigenic part from bacterial cell in case of this mbl pathway will be mannose now here mannose residue is acting as that so this is mannose okay now in this mannose mannose binding lectin which is a protein mbl is another important protein which is acting here so let me write it here mbl is also another important protein or mannose binding lectin now this lectin is also found in this complement pathway now mannose binding lectin so let us draw say this is the mannose binding lectin protein which come into account so the first step which was initiated in case of classical pathway via C1 QRS now in this case it is done using mannose binding lectin or MBL so this is MBL protein okay now utilizing MASP1 and MASP2 this protein is going to cleave C2 C4 and in this proteins okay so again in the very first step it is going to cleave C4 and then again it will be cleaving C2 so again say C4 comes in this is C4 B and C4 A the small unit will be released remember small units will be released larger units will be placed onto the bacterial cell membrane similarly for uh, C2 again say this is C2 A C2 A is the larger part so it will stick here and C2 B is the smaller part which will go away again C2 B and C4 A C4 is acting like anaphylatoxin remember now then here again after the activity so the what very basic step MBL is attached to the mannose which is uh, found in the surface of bacterial cell then what came here then C4 comes here and C4 will be cleaved into C4B and C4A who help to facilitate this particular reaction in this case the facilitator in this case is MASP1 and MASP2 now MASP1 and MASP2 is facilitating the cleavage of C4 and then it will produce C4B and C4A now C4B the larger part will be associated with the cell membrane of bacteria C4A will be released now the C4B along with MASP1 and 2 again MASP2 mostly will cleave C2 and it will cleave C2 into C2A and C2B C2B will be released C2A the larger part will be associated with the cell membrane now along with C4B and C2A it forms the C3 convertase now we are at the first barrier C3 convertase now as we are having in the first barrier it will act on C3 it will cleave C3 and what it generates so let me write C2A here instead of that it will generate C3 or C3, it will cleave C3 and it will produce C3B and C3A so C3B is a larger part so say this is C3 the large part C3B and C3A the smaller part so C3A this is the smaller part which is released now again C3A C4A these things are working as uh, the anaphylatoxin so they can trigger they can provide signal so this C3A and C4A these things and also C5A we are going to see later they are providing signal to other cells okay this is called the anaphylatoxic signals it is also important for the proper functioning now in this particular case we are at the first we just go through the first step first barrier now what we've got here C4B C2A 
and C3B. Now remember for the classical pathway also we end up with the same configuration of complement proteins together. It is C4B, C2A, C3B. Now the, along with all this we can call them the C5 converters. So and now at the second phase or second barrier of our discussion of our complement activation. And if we go back to this diagram we are having three barriers C3 converters, C5 converters then finally the lytic phase right so we are now at the C5 converters. So for uh, the C5 converters uh, complement uh, complex for classical pathway as well as MBL pathway is same. That's why I've told you that MBL and classical are very much resembling with each other. Now whatever. Now what we can do here is that we are having this complement C5 converters. Now that will eventually lead to the cleavage of C5 into again two parts. C5A, C5B. Now remember again, C5B is a larger part, but it cannot be associated directly on its own to the bacterial membrane. Now, a very important part for this region of the video, I'm just going to skip it very faster. For that purpose, you must go back and look the video for classical pathway. Otherwise, you cannot understand this because I'm not going to tell in detail again because I've already talked about classical pathway before. Now, here again, so C5 large subunit after cleavage it will it will be staying here somewhere else but C5 only can be embedded with the into the bacterial cell membrane only it have other supporter complement proteins like C6, C7 and C8. Now along with the supporter protein C6, C7 and C8 C5 will be embedded onto the membrane. So now let's draw say this is C5. So this is C5B, okay, C5B protein. And along with factors like C6, C7, so let us draw C7 in red color here. And also C8, so let us draw it with again blue color. So again, using C8 and C6 C and C7, it actually embed the C5B part onto the cell membrane. So let us, so this is C8, this is C7, this is C6, okay, and this is C5B. So these are the complement proteins. Along with C6, C7 and C8, it will in embed itself onto the bacterial membrane. Now what it can do is that it will recruit more and more C9. Now remember the activity of C9. C9 can actually form membrane pore complex. So it's a barrel shaped structure. It will form a barrel like structure and through the barrel like structure what can happen it can produce the spores. Now as it is producing holes in the cell membrane as it is producing holes in the cell membrane throughout the place, throughout the place. So small holes throughout the uh, cell scattering throughout the plane. Now it will allow to disrupt the environment of the bacterial cell. It will allow to remove some proton contents and pH will be changed. So as a result of that, the cell will eventually die through the osmotic pressure loads. Okay, so this is the process of mannose binding lectin pathway, extremely similar to that of the classical pathway. Now this last part, last part of having C5, C6, 7, 8 and 9 together to function properly. So I must write here, this is C9 complex. So having all these things together, we can end up with uh, the lysis of the bacterial cell, a lysis of the pathogen. So this part is called the lytic pathway after the conversion of C5. Okay, so we have go through three barriers and that can end up with this production. Now again, I must tell you something ab about this other parts. I haven't talked it before like for a uh, classical pathway. That these products like C4A for example, C3A for example and also C5A, so I haven't uh, looked at you. C5A is also a product. C5A is also cut out. So C5A, C3 and C4A, these products can act as anaphylotoxin. Now this anaphylotoxin are important, for important mediators that trigger some of the cells. Now what kind of cells they can trigger? Now these things can actually trigger two different types of cells. One is basophils. 
okay basophils mast cells eosinophils these things so it's a mast cell suppose this is a mast cell so let us write it here like that mast cell this is one these mast cells are actually hugely granular cells so granules are present they have all the small dots in between them all the small small enzymes chemical mediators are present inside the cells now these anaphylotoxins can have the signal to this mast cells now it will tell the mast cells to degranulate now as this mast cells are going to degranulate it will end up with the release of these chemical components onto the tissue onto the bloodstream now as a result of that it can have a chemical factory or chemical release into the environment now what kind of chemical it can have it are ha they are having histamines so if we write it here they are having histamine very first kind of mediators that we can get from this mast cells are histamines also heparins and also uh, some of the other chemical mediators that can eventually lead up to several physiological effects now what are the physiological effects now come here and discuss the physiological effect that we are going to see from this phase by the release of histamines are one vasodilatation what will happen uh, the the vessel uh, blood vessel that we are having it is dilated as a result of this vasodilation what will happen blood cells can easily migrate and move through the blood endothelial or uh, vascular endothelial as a result what will happen it will increase swelling into a particular area okay so vasodilatation and also airway constriction occurs in most of the cases so the airway we are looking at this airway is constricted now as a result of this airway construction and vasodilatation sometimes people may lead to death okay but this is not that much a uh, uh, disgusting uh, for all the cases because it is tightly controlled the whole mbl pathway as well as the classical pathway systems are tightly controlled okay there are inhibitors of this c1 for alternative uh, for sorry for classical pathway this c1 inhibitor is there for classical pathway as well as there are some inhibitors present for the mbl pathway this like the c2a c3a these are the inhibitors that are present which can control the amount of c4a c3 and c5a that are being generated okay because the c3 and c5a are potent anaphylotoxin that's why they are called anaphylotoxin okay so it's the effect of it is a toxic like okay so we have discussed the effectivity of all of these complements for classical as well as mbl pathway now in the future discussion we'll be talking about the alternative pathway we will see that alternative pathway is nonetheless similar either to mbl or classical pathway it's completely different and it is a very interesting pathway because it do not depend upon the presence of antibodies in the very first place it can do work on its own okay and also we are going to see that this alternative pathway is a little bit difficult than this classical and mbl pathway okay thank you